Hi there, welcome to uh, today's lesson where we will be completing the Edexcel IGCSC ICT sample assessment material. So SAM stands for sample assessment material. Uh, one practical paper. Okay, so if you go through the Edexcel website where they have released the past papers, uh, they have two sample assessment material. So this is sample assessment material number one. Okay, this is the uh, first paper. Uh, if you need this paper, if you require the paper, if you require the data files of this paper, you can always drop an email to this address and uh, we'll be able to get back to you with the files and the question paper as well. Okay, so we'll be starting off with activity number one, which is uh, dealing with spreadsheet software. So I have the uh, question paper open over here with me. Okay and over here the instructions have been given uh, and over here you can see in this paper we have spreadsheet presentation software database and word processing software coming uh, over here there is a scenario that has been given and you need to keep in mind that you need to use the scenario throughout the paper so throughout the paper you will have to refer to the scenario whenever the question asks you to do so and also you have to keep in mind there's something called a house style okay so when it comes to excel i don't think you will be required to use the house Okay, but let's see later on in the question if they ever tell us the house style. Keep in mind right at the beginning of the paper, details of the house style have been mentioned. Okay, so let's get started with our first question, okay, which is uh, from the spreadsheet uh, a topic. Okay, so it says the spreadsheet hotel contains details of the hotels owned by the company. It has two worksheets called detail and discount. Open the spreadsheet hotel and then open the worksheet detail. Okay, so over here I have my data files with me. I'm supposed to open up hotel. So let me open up hotel. And once I open up hotel, I'm supposed to open up the detail worksheet. So you can see at the bottom I have two worksheets. Okay, and I already have uh, the detail worksheet open up on my screen. Then the question paper goes on to say I'm supposed to enter these details in the footer. So task A1, your name, candidate number, and center number to be uh, entered in the footer. So how do we go into the footer? We come to the insert tab and we come to header and footer. Okay, so right now we are in the header area. Okay, we are right now in the head header area. And right at the top, inside the header and footer tab, you can see there's a button which when you click will directly take you to the footer. Okay, or else you can scroll all the way down. You can just click on one of these blank cells. Okay, and then you can scroll down and you will also see the footer visible. Okay, so you can come over here and you're supposed to type over here. You're supposed to type task A1, your name, candidate number, and center number. So I'm going to type task A1, my name, my candidate number, and my center number. Okay, so the first part is done. Okay, so once you have completed the footer part, I would recommend you just click on one of these blank cells. And right now you are in a view which is known as layout view. Okay, can you see this is the view where the header is visible, the footer is visible. This is known as the uh, layout view. So there is no problem in continuing doing your work in the layout view, no problems at all. Uh, it's just that I prefer to do this in normal view. So let me come into the view tab and instead of being in page layout, I'm going to go back into normal view okay so this is how the view looks okay then the question paper goes on to say Jayesh has bought a new hotel the details for the new hotel are so these are the details for the new hotel add these details to the worksheet so you can see on the left hand side each column is given and this is the respective data for each column okay so the code is 544 SP so let me just come over here and type it 544 SP and the hotel name is Malaga Rest Easy, Spain 5, Malaga Rest Easy, Spain 5, and then we have 7566.45, 7566.45, okay? So the details have been entered. Then it goes on to say, task A1B, format the detail worksheet so that the currency values show the currency symbol. So you can use any one of these symbols and it should be at two decimal places. Okay, so the currency values, if you look over here, grade is not a currency value. It's not a monetary value. Rooms is not a currency value. However, daily room rate is a currency value. It's a monetary value. So there are two ways you can make this a currency value. The shortcut and easy way is over here when you come to the home tab you can see you have where you can convert this into an accounting number format you can from over here you can select dollar pound euro, whichever you prefer to use okay so one method is you can do it over here 
okay the second method that you can do is you can right click you can first select your data so with a mouse I, ha mouse I have selected my data and then I right click and I come to something called format cells so when I click on format cells okay so over here I come to the number tab and over here I tell that my data is in the category of currency so I click on currency okay how many decimal places it's two decimal places exactly how the question paper told me and I don't want to go with dollar I want to go with pound as this is a UK paper so let me scroll all the way down to when I come to the English United Kingdom pound okay so I take this and I say okay so now you can see all of these are having the currency symbol the pound currency symbol and they are also having two decimal places okay so I've shown you two ways of doing it you can use whichever way you prefer okay obviously this is much more easy you just come and click over here and then from here you can adjust the decimal places okay the longer method would be right click format cells okay so you can choose whichever you prefer all of the data is visible this is the second requirement so you can see yes in this column some of the data is not visible in this column some of the data is not visible so what you can do is you can click over here can you see where my cursor is right now so when you click over here when you click over here all the columns get selected okay and then if you come to one of the columns if you keep your cursor over here and this is the symbol when you want to adjust the width of a column okay this is the symbol that you are now ready to adjust the width of column A so instead of adjusting column by column I have now selected all the columns and I'm now going to double click on column A okay once the symbol appears I'm going to double click as soon as I double click what's going to happen is all the other columns are going to auto fit into its content okay the columns are going to be big enough so that all the content is going to be visible watch I'm just about to double click so as I double click can you see all the columns auto adjusted so that all the content is now visible I did not have to manually do it for each column okay so that question is also done all of the data is visible then the question goes on to say sort the detailed worksheet into alphabetical order by hotel name alphabetical order of location okay so there are two sortings to be done so what you do is you first select your data okay and then what you can do is you can come in the home tab you have something called uh, sort and filter okay so when you open sort and filter you have something called custom sort okay where you can define how is the sorting going to take place so since we have two sortings to be done it would be a better idea to go with custom sort okay now when you do take custom sort always ensure that this box is ticked because when you say my data has headers automatically what happens is the first row that you selected this particular row okay will not be s considered in the sort if you do not tick this if you do not tick this what will happen is code hotel name location grade they will also move with the data okay when you click sort they too will move and we don't want that happening we want the headings to remain in its place isn't it which is why I have uh, told my computer my data has headers which means do not consider the first row when it comes for sorting okay so then when it comes to sorting guys it says into alphabetical order by hotel name within alphabetical order of location so keep in mind the within part you will have to do first okay the within part needs to be done s needs to be done first okay so within alphabetical order of location so we will be selecting location first sort by location so when you say alphabetical order it is a to z okay and then our second level our second level will be the uh, first part which is worksheet into alphabetical order by hotel name okay now this is a little confusing but uh, what I want you to understand is the within part we sort first okay this within part which is the location we do it first and then we do the remaining which is uh, alphabetical order by hotel name okay so I have added a level so this has appeared over here so then I say hotel name that too is alphabetical order so I'll keep it at A to Z and I'll click on OK so now the sorting has taken place okay uh, moving on to the next part it says save the spreadsheet as task a1 so when you're saving your files please do ensure you're saving all of them in one location okay so you can click on file save as or you can use the shortcut key F12 so when you press F12 that is a shortcut key for save as so I'm, I ensure I'm in the correct folder yes I am and I'm supposed to save this as task a1 okay that's also done okay then it goes on to say print the detail worksheet on one side of a4 showing the data okay so what you do is you select okay this is what I need to print you can use the shortcut key control P okay so when you press control P 
okay you come into the print preview section where you can see how is your printout gonna look okay um, over here you can say print only what i selected okay print selection okay uh, if everything looks fine thereafter you can go ahead and click on the print button printing will start okay <coughs> so we're done with uh activity number one okay the not activity number one the the first part of activity number one is complete uh, let's move on to task a2 okay which is still in spreadsheet okay over here it says Jayesh, Jayesh wants to use spreadsheet tools to analyze the data open the worksheet detail enter these details in the footer okay so let's go into the detail worksheet oh, we are already in the in details worksheet so I have to change it to task a2 so let me come to insert header and footer uh, let me go to the footer I'll just click on this button it will jump down to the footer so instead of task a1 I'm going to change this to task a2 okay and as soon as I do that I'm going to click on one of the blank cells I'm going to come to the view tab and I'm going to tell my computer I want to go back into normal view okay because I don't like this page layout view a lot okay so let's go back into normal view scroll up so the data is visible and thereafter it says enter a formula in cell f32 to calculate the average daily room rate so f32 so f32 is over here and I'm supposed to calculate the average daily room rate so I have the values over here I'm supposed to find the average over here so there are two ways of doing it first method is you can use when you come to the home tab you have something called the auto sum function okay so when you click over when you click the drop down list of the auto sum function you get the average function okay so when you click on that the computer will do the entire formula for you okay so when you click on this the computer types the entire formula for you selects the range for you and it asks is this correct so you, all you have to do is press the enter key if it's all right if it's not all right you can click and you can edit the range okay so I don't want it to come all the way to f31 I want it to stop at f30 so it's correct it starts from f4 and it should stop at f30 so I'll just click on this remove the one and put zero over there so f42 f30 okay so it says the average is 65.78 okay so this is an easier way of doing it let me just show you the second way which is you basically type the function equal you, uh, all excel formulas begin with equal so equal average and then you open brackets and you select your range you say it's from here to here and then you close brackets and you press enter okay so this is another way of finding the average okay then the question goes on to say Jayesh estimates that 80% of the rooms in the hotels are occupied each day okay let's go through that question again Jayesh estimates that 80% of the rooms in the hotels are occupied each day enter formula in suitable cells to calculate the daily income for each hotel if 85% if 80% of the rooms are occupied okay so Jayesh estimates that 80% of the rooms will be occupied so now we are supposed to tell him what his income would be if 80% of the rooms are occupied okay so we got to tell him what his daily income is okay now if you look over here you for example if you take Chittagong rest it has 84 rooms okay and the room rate for every room is 52.85 okay now we are supposed to find the income if 80% of the rooms are occupied okay so in this particular Chittagong rest if 80% of the rooms are occupied how much is he going to earn okay so you know in Excel all formulas begin with the equal symbol so let's put that first uh, equal okay so we want only 80% of the rooms okay so what you can do is you can write 80 percent don't forget to put the percentage symbol and write it in decimal form 80 percent in decimal form is 0 0.8 whichever you prefer okay so 80 percent multiplied so star symbol multiplied by the number of rooms because we just want 80 percent of the rooms okay so now we have got 80 percent of the rooms now we need to know how much now we need to multiply it by the room rate okay because we want to know how much he is going to earn if 80 percent of the rooms are occupied so one last thing is multiply okay multiply by the daily room rate okay that's it you can go ahead and press the enter key so once you press the enter key it will tell you when 80 percent of the rooms are occupied he is going to be earning three thousand five hundred and fifty one point fifty two 
pounds. Okay, this is how much he will be earning if 80% of the rooms are occupied. Okay. Uh, then the question goes on to say, calculate the total daily income. Okay, calculate the total daily income. So before we do calculate the total daily income, let us replicate this formula for the remaining cells. Okay, so the same formula needs to be applied for the rem for the remaining cells. It's just that the cell addresses only need to change. So when you replicate, when you pull this down, that is exactly what will happen. Same formula, only cell addresses will change. Okay, so let's do that. Let's pull this down. Okay, so you can see it has worked perfectly. Okay, if you are by any chance getting hashtags over here, if you're getting something like this, just keep in mind your column is too small, which is why it's appearing like this. Don't worry, don't panic. Just increase the, si the width of your columns and the data will come back to normal. Okay, now the next thing the question paper says is save the spreadsheet as task A2. I would recommend this before you do this, I would recommend you put a suitable label over here because later on in the question paper they will tell you to label the columns but then it might be too late because you might forget what the column is about it so i would recommend you label it now itself so you can just simply say daily income rooms occupied okay just put something like this which you can understand okay uh, obviously this is taking way too much of space so let's wrap text okay let's make it slightly bigger okay looks better okay and then don't forget the question paper told you to save the spreadsheet as a uh, task a2 so once again i'm going to use my shortcut key which is f12 okay a quick reminder you might be using your laptop on your laptop f12 might be to increase the volume decrease the volume brightness you know, it might have that kind of a function then you may have you will have to press f f12 okay so i'm going to change this name to task a so with that, uh, task A2 is also completed, okay? And then the question goes on to task A to B. Okay, so this is a bit of a, uh, a larger area. Okay, a lot of functions to be done. So we'll continue task A to B in the next video, okay? In the uh, next video.